Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Does it ever seem like the media get weekly memos telling them how to word their news coverage? Well, if they do, this past weekend's theme was fear. On Saturday, hundreds of illegal immigrants were arrested in coordinated ICE raids across six states. Arresting illegal immigrants is the job of ICE. So you might think, well, no big deal. But the press apparently got the memo saying otherwise. Fear spreads across U.S. after immigration arrests, blared one CNN headline. Fear grips immigrant communities after ICE raids, cried the AP. Trump administration's deportation raids spark fear in immigrant communities, said Time magazine. What's this new fear epidemic? Where does it come from? David Leopold is an immigration attorney and a critic of President Trump's immigration policies. He joins us tonight from Cleveland. David, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks for having me, Tucker. So I, we read today that the government of Mexico is spending tens of millions of dollars to fight these executive orders and that they're mobilizing uh, U.S. consulates across the United States to help people in the United States illegally remain here. Mm -hmm. Why do you think the government of Mexico is doing that? Well, I can't speak for the government of Mexico, but I can speak for the people of, you know, that I deal with. And, and I think what, you know, in your open, you mentioned fear. And I think it's Donald Trump. I think it's Steve Miller. I think it's Steve Bannon who are the ones who are perpetuating fear. And I think it's an overt attempt to create chaos. You know, we need a president, uh, Tucker, that is going to bring stability. We need a president who is going to give us confidence. We need a president who is going to respect the rule of law. And right. we've got a president who in the first three weeks of his, ter of his term has got uh, Ninth Circuit ruling against him because he's violated the Constitution. He's got a battery of lawsuits out of New York. He's got people trapped in airports, uh, which, you know, a court took care of. Uh, you know, this is not America. This is not okay. what we are. We can do better. Okay, so I want to get back to something you said that I absolutely agree with, which is that chaos is a bad thing and it degrades yeah. our society. And it's kind of hard to come back from chaos. So the government of Mexico, and this bears directly on what you do, so please don't take a pass on this question. Jorge Castaneda is the former foreign minister of Mexico under Vicente Fox. Big deal. They're Princeton graduate, by the way has said that the new strategy among rich people in Mexico is to fund lawsuits that will tie up our judicial system. There's a massive backlog of immigration cases, as you know. He said he'd right. like to increase his backlog, you know, 5x, and bring our system to a halt until the president relents. That is a strategy based on creating more chaos, is it not? Well, look, again, I, I'm not a Mexican official, and if you want to talk to them, I, I, suspe I su suggest you bring them on the show. But what I can tell you oh, no. is that no, wait, our... Is... Well, hang on. You, you asked a question. Let me answer, yeah, Tucker. Please you do. Know, you, you mentioned the immigration court's backlog, and they are backlog. 500,000 cases. Why is that? That's because the Republicans refused in 2013 to pass an immigration reform bill right. in the House of Representatives, even though the votes were there. We could have reformed the immigration system, and you and I would be having a conversation tonight about an orderly country, about a place where need, people are not in panic. You know, but that's a little, it's a little, come on, David. I mean, I was here for that whole argument, and I don't think that the so-called immigration reform that you're referring to, there's good and bad in it, but it wouldn't have fixed everything, and, you, and that's an overstatement, and you know it. But what I'm so struck by is the fact that you're unwilling to even comment on what the Mexican government is doing, and I wonder if you extended that same courtesy to the Russian government. I'm sure you were in a tizzy like everybody on the left two months ago with the idea that the Russians were trying to foul with our system. They're trying to influence the outcome of our systems. Here you have the Mexican government on our southern border saying we're right. going to shut down the judiciary in your country unless you well, do what we want, and you've got no comment on that? Well, look, our judiciary, uh, you know, our, our Article I courts speak for themselves. They're the same courts that ruled against Donald Trump, the independent judges. Okay. If you want to talk about the judiciary, let's ask the president, because he is trying to delegitimize okay. the judiciary in this well, country. Well, work with me here. Let, let's just let's have a, like a rational back and forth. Well, we can talk sure. about the same thing. I know that you don't like Trump and you're mad about a bunch of different things, and some are legitimate and some aren't. I'm not mad. We're talking I'm just... about, you disapprove. <laughs> but we're talking about immigration policy, and I'm just asking you to comment on something in the news today mm -hmm. about the Russian government trying to influence our immigration policy in the same way that you would like to. And I'm wondering, why do you think they're doing that, and is it legitimate? Well, I don't know what the Russian government's up to. What I do know is that, you know, the Mexican there's... government. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. The Mexican government. Again, I, I don't know what they're up to. I, look, I, I think we, as Americans, ought to be running our own courts, ought to be running our own immigration policy. I don't think other governments, whether it's Mexico, whether it's Russia, whether it's Israel, whether it's France, ought to be involved in our judicial system. What I do want to see, though, Tucker, and this is why, you know, you said I was angry. What I'm concerned about is that we've got a new president. And what this president has done, together with, with people like Steve Bannon and, and uh, Steve, uh, Steve, um, uh, Stephen Miller, 
who, by the way, was on television yesterday. This is just uh, silly. I mean, this is just silly. I, mean, silly. I, I doubt I mean, you know here. anything about what those guys do for a living. I'm not here to defend them, but I mean, let's I just get back to the core issue here. And, and, I'm, and I'm serious. Like, why do you think that we have 11, 12, 13, we don't know the full number, but million people living in this country illegally? Maybe since you do this for a living, you've thought about it a little bit. And maybe I, it's connected to the fact that rich people in Mexico want them to stay here because they don't want to pay for the social safety net that we have. They want the American middle class to pay for it. Well, I don't so, think that's quite fair. Oh, it's not quite fair? Really? No, because they pay less in taxes, the rich in Mexico, than any OECD country there is. I'm and not so talking maybe about we should the, be asking Tucker. for reforms in Mexico, no? And I'm talking about the people here. We're talking about 11 million people, most right. of whom have been here for many years, most of whom have long ties to the United States, right. have U.S. citizen Some, children, yeah. pay their taxes, mind you, if, if, through ITN, international tax ID numbers. Who do you think is, is, is supporting our social security system? Look, the immigrants in this country came to this country like my grandfather did when he fled the Holocaust. They came here for a better life. They came here for, for in many okay. cases, for shelter. What we have now is a president who wants to turn the, to, you know, he wants to throw out refugees who are coming in in need of shelter. He wants to throw out um, immigrants who are coming here to, to, to bring the best and the brightest. You know, what did we see last week? But, we saw doctors but who David, were thrown out of the country. Come on, look, Tucker. David, David, facts then, are I just important, want, no, too. No, no, look, you're getting into the, the talking points which I hear every day and are boring. I want to get to the principles here. And here's the principle you just elucidated. You said these people came here to work in, in search for a better life. And I don't doubt that. I know some of them, and I, I, I think you're right. But there are a lot of people who would like to move to other countries for a better life, and I'm wondering right. if all of them have the absolute right to do that. So just to give you one among many examples, there are a ton of poor people in the city of Detroit. It's right on the Canadian border, right across from Windsor, Ontario. Right. Do they have the right to move illegally to Canada and go on Canadian welfare programs and take Canadian jobs, and should the U.S. government be encouraging that? Well, of course not, and that's why... Well, what do you mean, me of course not? You asked me to answer your question, so let me I'm try that. I'm just surprised. That. Let me try. You Tucker, let me that. try to answer your question. Please. Uh, of course people shouldn't be moving into countries illegally. I don't think anybody, you know, promotes that. What, what, what I'm here to talk about well, What are you really saying? Is, You're saying I'm that saying, people here illegal have a right to stay. That's what you just said. You've been saying it for seven and a half minutes. Okay. So, what I'm, but, but they don't have a right to go to Canada to do that, only a right to come here? Like, what is, what's, the, what's the consistent theme here, just so I can, those following along at home can theme, know? Tucker, the consistent theme is that we need to fix an outdated immigration system. You know that as well as that I know that. That doesn't mean this, anything. Can like I you're finish? saying that people can have a right here to stay here even though they're here illegally, but they don't have a right to move to any other country illegally. Why the double standard? Simple well, question. Well, what I'm saying is that people who have contributed to this country, people who have followed the rules, people who have children that have grown up in this country, people who have paid their taxes, right. people who will learn English, people who will be vetted through, through security screenings, people who, when we bring out of the shadows, um, we want to know who's here. That will make us safer. Okay, so what are That's the people who I'm haven't saying. followed the rules? So the president says we want to deport people who have committed felonies, and he's tried to do that, and people right. like you have gotten completely hysterical about no. it. Should he be allowed to deport people, as the previous president did, who committed felonies? Like, I mean, Nobody, yes or no? See, that's the thing. Nobody is arguing about, uh, about uh, whether or not we should deport felons or national security risks, Tucker. That's the whole point. Under the Obama immigration enforcement you, priorities, felons and national security risks and recent border crossers were a number one for deportation so if donald trump or if general kelly really wanted to keep these enforcement priorities in place why did they have to replace them but that's we, what they've been doing did you notice that the ice roundups in the last week were almost exclusively of people with criminal records this is the well, the thing well, that we should fear i mean if, are you following let me the push news back. at all hang on let me push back against that i know what ice is saying and i know what uh, secretary kelly said today but what we don't have with any of those reports is transparency they aren't telling us exactly okay. who We've had members of Congress, Joaquin okay. Castro from Texas, members of the Hispanic Caucus. What we want is some transparency okay. here. Well, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed uh, in the arguments that you've marshaled, but I hope you'll come back. Uh, I'll be back to... anytime, Tucker. Great. Thanks, Thank David. You. I appreciate it.